The road to Madrid from the is mainly through flat arid country. The colour of the many small villages, usually perched on rocky hilltops, blends with that of the land. Situated on the 40th parallel, Madrid occupies the geographical centre of the Iberian Peninsula at an elevation of about 2,200 feet, the highest capital in Europe. The city enjoys more cloudless days than almost any other city in Europe. From here, the Plaza España begins one end of the Gran Via, one of the most elegant streets in Madrid, fronted with expensive boutiques, banks, hotels and cinemas, and where outdoor eating is a feature, especially in the evenings, when the Madrideños come out either to stroll or dine while watching the passing scene. One of the small streets off the Gran Via, where our hotel was situated. Traffic in Madrid is fast and unbelievably heavy with manners at a premium and the many one-way streets can lead to great confusion and frustration for the tourist. The Poeta de Alcala is a triumphal arch completed in 1768 in honour of the Bourbon King Charles III. King Charles also created the most famous fountain in Madrid, and perhaps all Spain, the Sibeles, the Greek goddess of fertility riding her chariot. The great tree-lined boulevard of the Prado contains many fine buildings, statues and fountains, including the statue of King Neptune and his attending fountain. Most important of all is the Museum of the Prado, containing one of the greatest art collections of the world and the best representation of the Spanish school of painting. Although the queue looked formidable, the wait was not very long. Unfortunately, filming inside was prohibited. Obviously some protest meeting where an effigy was being burnt. Hand-painted fans were everywhere a Spanish feature and were for the most part very reasonable in price. Along the several walk streets there are many elegant small shops for Madrid is a city of fashion and nowhere had we seen more beautiful women's clothes. The Puerta de Sol, or Gate of the Sun, has actually disappeared, but the name remains. The vast square of the Plaza Mayor was the heart of old Madrid, the setting for the greatest religious ceremonies, royal processions, bullfights, execution of heretics, 
and other great spectacles. The plaza attracts crowds in summer when the festivals of yesteryear, tournaments and dramas are played out upon the large central area. And on Sunday mornings from around 11 o'clock until about 1, a stamp and coin market throbs with life. Stamps from all over the world change hands, while schoolboys can be seen rubbing shoulders with experts in search of bargains. You hungry? Have a potato chip. The cable car ride from the edge of the city gives one a wonderful view of the royal palace before crossing the river Manzanares to the Casa de Campo, miles and miles of natural parklands, formerly the royal hunting grounds. If your visit to Madrid is short, perhaps a visit to the Prado heads the list of attractions with the royal palace next. And for a third, perhaps you've guessed, it's a bullfight. A sport that has waxed and waned in popularity over the centuries, but finally brought to the present state of popularity by General Franco in 1936. The Spaniard regards the bullfight with the same reverence as we do the ballet, and the Madrid arena is the place to see it, for only the most skilled of the matadors are presented here. The initial parade of the Toreros is preceded by two bailiffs on horseback wearing 16th century costumes. These are the representatives of the president. From him they receive his instructions and then convey them to the Toreros. The bulls, usually six in number, are allotted among three matadors whose task it is to confront the bull and finally kill it. The troop comprises three files, each headed by one of the matadors followed by his assistants two picadors mounted, and three banderillas on foot. The colourful procession crosses the arena and halts to salute the president. The ball is released and is confronted by the matador with a large cape. The picadors on horseback are armed with long lances or pickers to wound the bull in the neck muscles so that its head will be carried lower. Banderillas, which are short staves covered with coloured paper and barbed steel points, are planted in the bull's shoulders in order to correct any tendency on the bull's part to hook to any particular side. Bullfighting as a pure spectacle often scales the heights of dramatic intensity, based as it is on the courage, skill and grace of one man against the pride and strength of a specially selected bull. Now begins the final stage, carried out by the matador alone, using the short fighting cape. Ideally, the bull is killed with a single thrust of the sword between the shoulder blades at the back of the neck. The bull collapses and is given the final coup de grace by the assistants.
And so concludes a sport or an art cruel to some but dear to millions. Thank <laughs> you.